welcome to Doing Our Bit. I'm Adrian Smell and today we're going to look at smart meters, separating fact from fiction. Please like and subscribe as this will help the channel grow and also I'm really interested in your comments too. My first electricity bill in the late 70s was from the one supplier and was delivered quarterly. I just paid the bill I had no real idea of how much energy I was actually using and certainly weren't considering anything about efficiency. Fast forward to today and we have multiple tariffs from multiple suppliers. My meter delivers readings every 30 minutes. We will cover some of the common myths surrounding smart meters, some of the actual genuine issues you might encounter, and then my final conclusions. You may have heard this is a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. The problem is this from an environmental standpoint and with rising energy costs, particularly at the time of this video, it really is an issue financially as well for many. If you wanted to lose weight, you certainly wouldn't resolve to weigh yourself every three months or every month, not taking any notice of how much you eat or what exercise you do and then expect to succeed, would you? The key thing to save energy is knowing exactly what appliances, what what your lifestyle actually uses in terms of energy on a daily basis. You may have heard or believe they represent a privacy risk. This is entirely false because in fact the meter only actually communicates the ID of the meter. There's no personal information transmitted. And the other side of it is, of course, the data that's actually supplied is just your energy uses. There's no understanding of the appliances that you're using or when. So there's no marketable data in there, even if somebody wanted to use it. And if they did, of course, there's significant fines for, for companies sharing personal data without your permission. You may have heard that smart meters represent a security risk. This again is not true because in fact security is something that they take incredibly seriously and the data is encrypted and doesn't actually use the internet. It uses its own secure network. Your energy readings are sent in a similar way in which your mobile phone actually sends and receives information. Certainly there's a possibility that the network itself can be hacked as was seen recently in the US with the petrol pipeline. Our systems are computer controlled and of course whether you've got a, an old analog meter or smart meter makes no difference because the system itself is digital. You may have read that all smart meters will stop working in 2033 and so what a waste of money. This is because the existing meters use 2G and 3G technology which is due to be switched off in 2033 in favour of 4G or 5G or whatever might be available by 2033. But let's remember as I record this in 2022 that's still 11 years away. And it's also the case and that it's been shown that in fact the communications hub within the meter could be changed independent of the smart meter so it doesn't necessarily mean that the whole meter has to be replaced. This frankly is a non-issue if you're thinking of having a smart meter fitted now. You may have heard that smart meters makes it potentially easier for a supplier to disconnect your supply because it can be done remotely. Whereas this is technically true there are consumer protections already in place. So if you're struggling to pay the bill, pick up the phone and speak to them because you are the customer and they really don't want to do this if there's any possible way around it. You may have read with a smart meter you can't actually change supplier. This used to be the case for third of first generation meters but today they're only installing second generation ones which can be switched supply without any issues at all because they all are on the same network. But personally I switched in August of last year uh, with my first generation meter and there was no problem at all in switching over. And lastly you might have heard smart meters represent a health risk. This really is entirely false as it generates less radiation than the devices that you already use within your home, such as Wi-Fi routers, mobile phones, etc. The in-home displays do seem to vary in their usefulness. Uh, my one, which is obviously a first generation one, um, tells me the money that's been spent in each of the areas, gas or electricity. The newer in-home displays 
will actually show you a dial of what you're actually using real time now and it, it will help you to see when certain devices are switched on exactly how much power they are using. All this information puts you in control and makes you understand exactly what energy you're using which is what the, the whole point of the system is. One issue can be communication reliability. If you're using an off-peak tariff like I use with, with Octopus Go that basically requires you to have meter readings every 30 minutes. If the communications fails on a particular day, as, as in my case on the 8th of December, then you will be charged your electricity at the normal rate, um, disregarding the off-peak. To be fair, since the 31st of August 2021, I've only had one day that 8th of December where in fact the communication has failed. And we're recording this on the 10th of February 2022. So really I can't really complain and a number of companies offer off-peak tariffs because that then helps you to be encouraged to use energy at a time when in fact they've got spare capacity and switch demand away from peak hours which is typically between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. at night. If you do switch, your installer should confirm with you the actual last meter reading, as you can see here. It's important to realize that actually the supplier of the meter is a different company to the actual supplier that you're using for your energy. That's why actually getting this meter reading uh, locked is so important. So in conclusion, I've had a smart meter since December 2018. And while accepting that the technology is certainly not perfect, I would definitely recommend getting one of the new second generation meters installed. I hope this removes some of the fear and anxiety which is stopping people from actually enjoying some of the benefits. And if you're considering solar and battery technology going forward, it's really useful for discovering exactly what is your average daily usage. And yes, if you give it attention, it will make you more aware of the energy you're using and give you insights into how you might make some changes. Data is always power. Please check out the links below, which I hope provide a fact-based assessment. Hope you found this video helpful, and if you have, please like. And if you have any comments, please write them in the space below. Always interesting to hear people's feedback. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.